And we want to play for you a new ad from Republican gubernatorial candidate in South Carolina, Nikki Haley. Just yesterday, a conservative blogger on the Palmetto Estate said that he had had a relationship with Nikki Haley. She has denied these allegations, and Sarah Palin jumped to her defense on Facebook, and the Haley campaign released this ad with Sarah Palin's endorsement. We need fresh faces, fresh voices, and fresh ideas working for the people of this state, not the power of the legislature. Nikki Haley supporter, Governor Sarah Palin. A strong pro-family, pro-life, pro-Second Amendment, pro-development, conservative reformer, your next governor, Nikki Haley. Now it's time for our Post Politics segment, and joining us today is Washington Post reporter Ann Kornbluth. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So you heard us talking at the top of the show about this compromise on Don't Ask, Don't Tell. The White House has endorsed this plan. It seems that the votes are going to happen over the next week or so. Are the votes there, though, for this to actually get through? I don't think we know yet. Um, I think the calculation by Democratic leadership is that there will be more votes there now than there might be after the midterms, and that's one reason they want to get this done, even though the military wanted to wait until after the review process as you were talking about. Um, there are, however, Republicans, of course, and some centrist and conservative Democrats who have expressed qualms or outright opposition to it, so I don't think we know yet. And is your sense that this is being driven by the Dems up on the Hill um, more so than the White House? Is the White House going along with this reluctantly? Would they, too, rather this review to take place before the votes? Well, we've seen the White House drag their feet before, and this is not a feet-dragging exercise right now. Um, <laughs> they, obviously, this is being driven by the Hill, however. The White House has um, not only enough to do right now, but had indicated earlier on they were happy to abide by the military's wishes. So that's why this is really a compromise more than it is um, something that's being driven forward by either the White House um, or the Democratic leadership. They've said, yes, we will go ahead. We will have the votes. If it passes, we will. there will be some period of time that will elapse before it's actually implemented, although it could be as soon as just a few weeks. Mm -hmm. And we want to turn to a story that you have in today's post that looks at this rocky transition, a tough transition that ex-military officers have had since coming into the Obama administration in senior level positions, starting of course with that example of Dennis Blair last week who stepped down, was fired effectively as the director of national intelligence. Why has this transition been so difficult for former military officials? Well, and we've also seen it at the NSC with Jim Jones, who's the head there, with um, Scott Gratian, who is the a special envoy to the Sudan, and with um, Carl Eikenberry, who is in Afghanistan. Um, we got different explanations from everyone we spoke to and a number of people at the White House who said this is not by virtue of the fact that they are military officers. They are individual people who've had um, separate problems. But there is some sense that the military hierarchy is not something that always translates into the political sphere and that being able to play the political insider's game, knowing how civilians operate and relate to one another and that they don't always stick to the, the structure, the very rigid structure of the military, certainly not in this White House where there is an inside circle um, is something that has at times worked against them. And this coming, we also hear all the time, right, that the Defense Secretary Robert Gates is is the most powerful cabinet member, uh, and perhaps because he bridges uh, that divide a, a little bit uh, for folks between sort of translating the White House with the military. And I, I also want to ask you while I have you here about BP and how much the White House is feeling the heat right now. And if you sense from them uh, a sense of we're, we've turned this around in some way or no, they're still kind of scrambling. Uh, they're still kind of scrambling. I, I might even take out the kind of. Um, they, they haven't, I was being kind. They, right. they, haven't, um, they haven't figured this out. And in fact, they're looking at perhaps this going on all the way to August um, if there isn't a solution found. And in a way, they're stuck. They need BP. As much as they want to uh, be harsh about the performance and to criticize BP, at the end of the day, they have to rely on BP as a partner. So you've seen some mixed messages from the White House about how well BP has performed and even raising the question yesterday of, well, well, if we got rid of them, what would we replace them with? So there is, I think, stepped up vigilance from the White House, um, a, a harsher message certainly coming out yesterday, and yet they are in this relationship with BP, BP it seems, for the long run. And we don't have much time left, but the, the White House indicated the president might take some questions on Thursday about this. There's some talk that maybe he goes back down to the Gulf. Can that do anything? Well, uh, it could, although if it's still oil coming ashore, I don't know what good President Obama's visit would do. Unless but again, he's actually they have to, helping the oil. <laughs> unless he 
can personally go plug it. But I do think th that they will make every effort to show that he is still deeply engaged in this. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much, Ann Kornblut, for thank joining you. us. We appreciate it. And thank you very much for being with us. It'll be fascinating to see when the first big series of polling comes out on, on their response to this BP stuff. That does it for this edition of Top Line. Uh, thank you for watching. Be sure to click us on again tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining us.